and shedding list. This list is not limited to just the names that I called today. Um, for anyone that we know that is out that's sick or shut in, we want to we make sure we're, we're, we're uh, praying for them as well. Okay. I have Sister Lucy Johnson, Brother Wilson Jones, Sister Hazel's family, the Dupree family, Brother Willie Morton family, Brother Junior Griffin, Mother Harvey, Sister Anderson and Baby Carter, Sister Linda Patterson, Sister Selma Sizer, Brother Kyrie Mosley, Sister Erling Bradley and family, Sister Elmira Watkins, the Garrett family, Sister Doretha Richmond, Sister Betty Russell, Mr. and Mrs. Melvin and Bunny Hodge, Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. Hughes, the Tucker family, Brother Greg Brooks Sr. and his son, the Turner family, the Williams family, Sister Felicia Smith, Marshall Brown and family, Brother Charles Curing, Brother Ricky Bridgeford, Sister Autumn Liddell and family, Sister Mary Dixon, Brother Lou Tom Thomas, uh, Sister May Bradley and family, Sister Ethel Jones, Hines County, the Hines County School District students and personnel, Mr. and Mrs. Madge and Otto Neal family, Sister Kenyatta Wilson and family, Sister Christina Williams, Sister Lily Lacey, Sister Mary Berry, Brother Devin Watkins, Evangelist Williams, Brother Sherrod Dilmer, Sheila White Dilmer and Rodney Dilmer, Brother Stanley Lomax, Sister Pearl Miles, and uh, Sister, Get Sister Linda Gaddis. Thank you.
watched over us all night long. It was nobody but the Lord. Woke us up early this morning.
when you find it, I'm certain you'll find these words recorded. This is Joseph speaking now. But think on me when it shall be well with thee and show kindness, I pray thee, unto me and make mention of me unto Pharaoh and bring me out of this house. For indeed I was stolen away out of the land of the Hebrews and here also have I done nothing that they should put me into this dungeon. Now now turn over to chapter 41 verse 37.
time in our life that God is not working to make us a better man or a better woman. He's working on us every day to make us better. But we got to suffer at times. See, you ain't going to be able to live on this earth and never have to suffer. The Bible said that if you don't suffer with me, you can't reign with me. Jesus said that. And no matter what it looks like, God loves us even when it seems like he's not paying attention to what's going on in our life. He still loves us. And, and listen, Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 23, it teaches us that God sometimes will allow evil things to happen in our life and then he'll use the evil stuff to accomplish his plan. Anybody been terminated from a job and thought that that was just the end? And God blessed you to find a job that was way better than the one you had? The boss man thought he was doing you wrong, but God blessed you with something better. Anybody ever had to go through a divorce and thought that you just couldn't make it? And God fixed it and gave you somebody else? Gave you a sweeter life than what you had? I wonder if anybody here ever been sick. The doctor said they couldn't do you no good. And God showed up. And God healed your body. I ought to have a witness in here this morning. Saints of God, you got to remember and you got to believe that all things work together for the good for those that love the Lord and who are called according to his purpose. They work it for your good. No matter what it looks like, it's working for your good. God is working it out in your life. The truth is, the truth really is, y'all, that we, we worry about stuff that we don't even have to worry about. God don't want his children to be around here worrying. Turn it over to the Lord. Let him work it out for you. Whatever you're going through right now, God told me I could tell you, you're going to rise above it all. You're going to be more than a conqueror. Yeah, in our text this morning, that's exactly what happened to Joseph. In due time, Joseph rose above it all. God, I tell you, I tell you God wants us to learn that we have to suffer and serve at the same time. Folks don't want to do that though. We got to suffer and serve at the same time. Joseph was in prison. He was suffering for something that he didn't do. But they put him over all the prisoners and he was serving everybody that came in there. I know the Lord is, is all right. Chapter 39 verses 21 through 23 it talks about how the prison guard ended up putting Joseph in charge of everybody inside the prison wall. They threw him in prison, trying to cause harm upon him and trying to mistreat him. But God, the Bible says the Lord was with Joseph. God showed him mercy. God put something on the God's heart that he promoted Joseph to be over everybody in prison. Which brings us to our lesson this morning. And listen, as I, as I studied this lesson, I realized that Joseph had a close relationship with the Lord. You see, in our lesson this morning, in our lesson this morning, we're going to find out that while Joseph was in prison, God was with him. God was blessing him. And God allowed two very important men to be thrown in prison. These men were the, one of them was the butler, and one of them was the baker. They worked directly for Pharaoh. But they got thrown in prison. And when they got thrown in prison, the Bible says that, 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 that Joseph was good to them. Joseph developed a good relationship with them. Joseph was tending to whatever they needed in prison. And one morning, Joseph looked at them and they were very sad. Looked like it was something wrong with them. And, and I think I ought to tell you that when God put people in your life, you ought to know them well enough to tell when something ain't right with them in their lives. Especially your own family. You ought to know when your husband ain't acting right. You ought to know when there's something wrong with your wife. You ought to know when your 
children walk in and don't speak, there's something wrong. And you ought to say something. So Joseph noticed that there was something wrong with those two men, the butler and the baker. And Joseph asked him, what's, what's wrong? Why are y'all looking so sad? And they said to Joseph, we had a dream. They said, both of us had a dream last night. And we said, because there ain't nobody here to interpret our dream. And Joseph said, well, all interpretation belong to God. God is the one that can interpret dream. But Joseph said, but tell me what your dream was. Yeah, and the butler began to tell his dream first. And the butler said, I, I, I had a dream about a vine. He said, and, and the vine had three branches coming out of it. And out of the three branches, a cluster of grapes came out of it. He said, and in my hand, I was holding a cup for the king. And I squeezed the, the grapes into the cup. He said, and, 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 and I handed it to Pharaoh. He said, I don't know what that means. And God dealt with Joseph so much. Joseph said, I'll tell you what it means. He said, the three branches represent three days. Mm -hmm. He said, in three days, Pharaoh will raise up your head. And when he raised up your head, Pharaoh is going to point you back to the same job that you used to have. He said, you're going to be blessed. So, so, so when, 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 when he told that dream to the butler, the baker said, my turn, my turn. He said, I, I had a dream too. He said, he, said, he, said, he said, in my dream, I was carrying three baskets on top of my head. He said, and it had all the king's meat in there, whatever the king wanted to eat. He said, it was on my head, but he said, but the birds began to pick it and eat it up off my head. Joseph said, <laughs> he said, it ain't going to end well for you, brother. He said, the, 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 three, the three baskets represented three days. And in three days, he said, Pharaoh going to lift up your head, but he going to lift it up off your body. And he's going to hang you on a tree. And the birds going to eat your flesh. And I'm sorry to tell you, but brother, you finna die. Three days later, it was Pharaoh's birthday. And Pharaoh had a big celebration. And he invited all of his servants to come to the party. And Pharaoh called the, 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 the butler and the baker in. And the butler, he restored him back to his job. He said, come on back, get your position back. But when he looked at the baby, they hung him. Just like Joseph said. God used Joseph to interpret his dream. Joseph told the butler very plainly. He said, now, when they let you go, remember me. Do y'all remember what the thief said to Jesus on the cross? When you make it to your father's kingdom, remember me. Jesus remembered him right away, didn't he? But this butler forgot about Joseph. Jo Joseph stayed, yeah, they'll forget about you. you when you when you sick, folk will forget about you. You either better hurry up and get well, or you better go on down. Because they're going to stop coming to see about you. This man forgot about Joseph. Joseph thought for sure. Joseph said they, they let him go free. And I know the butler going to do what I told him to do. He's going to go talk to Pharaoh and I'm going to get out of this prison. Joseph said I ain't even supposed to be in here. He said they stole me. I'm a Hebrew and they stole me from my family. Joseph had his mind on going back home to be with his father. He missed his father. He didn't like being separated from his father. But you know, I realized something. The butler forgot about Joseph, but that was God's will. Because it wasn't time for Joseph to get out of that prison. Sometimes you're going through stuff right now, and you want to get out of it, but it ain't time yet for you to get out. You got to go through some stuff. God is preparing you for something better in this life. And you got to stop trying to figure out how to get 
get your own self out. Joseph thought he had a connection. He thought sure that the butler would get him out. The Bible said, going into verse number chapter 41, the Bible said that two years had passed by and Joseph was still in jail. But God, people will forget about you, but God will never forget about you. The Bible said that while Joseph was still in jail after two years, said Pharaoh began to have dreams. And Pharaoh dreamed. First dream he dreamed, he saw seven cows feeding in the meadow. And these seven cows was, was eating good. They were fat, pretty cows. They were healthy. Couldn't see no bones nowhere. Big, pretty cow. Seven of them. They came up out of the Nile River. They was feeding. And Pharaoh said, I, I kept looking in my dream. He said, and all of a sudden, seven skinny cows showed up. They were so poor. They looked pitiful. They looked sick. You could see the, the skin through the bone. And Pharaoh said, them seven poor cows walked up to them fat cows and ate every one of them up. Ate them up. Pharaoh said, but it confused me because when, when, when they ate the, the fat cows up, it didn't look like they had ate nothing. He said they were still poor and skinny. <laughs> Pharaoh went on back to sleep again. Had a dream the second time, same night. The second dream that he had. This time Pharaoh said, I was sleeping good. He said, and I saw seven fat, plump ears of corn come up on one stalk. He said, these, these ears of corn were so fat and full, they looked delicious. He said, but I kept looking in my dream and I saw seven little puny ears of corn come up on one stalk. These little old corns looked like the east wind had just blew them back and forth. They weren't even filled out. Corn that you can't even cut off the cob. He said, I saw seven of them. And them poor seven ears of corn devoured. Ain't up the full ears of corn. Ain't them up. Pharaoh was so distressed. He said, I gotta know what that means. And Pharaoh called all of his magicians in. He called all the wise men and he said, we're gonna have a meeting today. I need y'all, one of y'all need to tell me what this dream means. They couldn't tell him to save their life. God got a way, I tell you. God got a way of allowing us to rise above it all. When you in prison, when you in a bad place, just know God sees what you're going through. And he working a plan for your life. They couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't, they couldn't interpret the dream. So finally, the, 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 the butler said, Pharaoh, I remember when I was in jail. There was a young Hebrew boy. I had a dream. And the baker had a dream. He said, and this Hebrew boy interpret our dreams. And he said that I was going to be back in my position working for you. And he said the baker was going to be hung. He said, and everything that this young boy said came to pass. Pharaoh said, y'all go get him now. He said, y'all go get him right now. I don't care if he is a prisoner. You go get him. Won't God get you out of jail? Won't God get you out of trouble? All you got to do is do what the Lord say do. They went and told Joseph. They said, Pharaoh want to see you, man. Joseph said, y'all give me a razor. I got to shave. Joseph said, y'all said, give me, give me some more clothes. I need, to, I need to look presentable when I go before the king. Joseph showed up. And Pharaoh said, you see all these smart folks sitting in here? Mm -hmm. You see these magicians sitting in here, these wise men? Yeah. I told them my dream, and can't none of them interpret my dream. Yeah. Joseph said, well, Pharaoh, don't you know that God is the only one? Yeah. See, Joseph has sense enough to give God the praise before he even got, got the job done. Yeah. And before, before, we can, before we even reach our success, 
success in life, we need to already claim it in the name of Jesus. We need to already give God glory. You need to, you need to praise him before you get through it. Praise him before you go through it. You got to already know the victory is already won. So Joseph said, well, Pharaoh, God is the only one that can interpret dreams. He said, but, but tell me what your dream was. And Pharaoh began to talk to him. And Pharaoh told him the same dream that I just told you. But Pharaoh added a little something to it. This time Pharaoh said, when I saw them seven pole cows, he said, I had never seen nothing like that in all my life. I ain't never seen cows so skinny and poor like that. And, and, and Pharaoh said, I need to know what's going on. Joseph told Pharaoh, he said, I'm going to tell you, God is showing Pharaoh what he's about to do. God was showing Pharaoh what he was about to do. And, and I think I ought to share something with y'all. God was dealing with Pharaoh, not to save Pharaoh, but to save his own people. You see, all the Israelites, all the Israelites, Jacob and all of his family was living way across country. And God had to find a way to save his children. Why? Because Jesus was going to come through the lineage. He was going to come through, 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 the, through the tribe of Judah, which was one of Jacob's boys. So God had to make sure that they did not get destroyed. So Joseph said, God is telling Pharaoh what he's about to do. Joseph said to Pharaoh, he said, I'm going to interpret the dream for you. Them seven cows that you saw. He said, they represented seven years. He said, those seven good years of corn, the seven fat cows, they all represented seven years. He said, but the seven poor cows and the seven puny ears of corn, they also represented seven years. But the fat cows and the good corn represented seven years of plenteous, plenty food, plenty corn. He said, he said, Joseph said there's gonna be so much food in the land they ain't gonna be able to eat it all. Joseph said, them seven years represented good times. See, 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 every now and then, church, you going through some good times in life. But can I, can I tell you, if you forget about the Lord, God can turn them good days into bad days. But he can also turn bad days into good days. So, so Joseph, Joseph told him, he said, God gave you a double dream, man. He said he gave you a double dream because this thing is serious about what's going to happen. Joseph said, the first seven years is going to be plenty. Plenty corn all over the place. He said, the second seven years is going to be the worst famine the world has ever seen. He said, ain't nobody going to have no food to eat. The, 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 the ground nobody. For seven years there ain't going to be no corn grow nowhere. He said, God is telling Pharaoh what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Joseph said, but Pharaoh, I got an answer for you. Mm -hmm. He said, all you got to do, you need to find you one man. Mm -hmm. Ain't the Lord all right? <laughs> he said, you need to find you one man that's discreet and wise. And you need to put him over the whole land of Egypt. Egypt was a big old place. And Joseph said, God, not only did God give me the interpretation of your dream, but God has told me to tell you how you can be successful through your dream. Can, can I just tell y'all something? We're going through some difficult times in life right now. Folks now are scared more than ever. We don't know what's about to happen in the government. We don't know what's about to happen with the wars that's going on, but God knows. See, God can look way past seven years to see what's going to happen to us. But can I tell you this, what I love about the Lord? When the world is going through suffering, when the world is going through something, they don't know which way to turn, God will warn his people and God will prepare us for difficult times to come. He'll prepare his children, I tell you. God will tell us, Mason, don't be spending all that money. Something's going to happen soon. God will tell you. He'll guide your life. So he told Joseph to tell Pharaoh, put somebody over all that stuff, man. He said, he told Pharaoh, you're going to become, you're already rich, but you're going to become the richest man around. He said, because ain't nobody
nobody else going to know what God is telling me. <laughs> Lord is all right. Sometimes God will tell you stuff, but he won't tell your neighbor what's going on. Sometimes he'll tell you stuff and won't even tell your spouse what's going on. So he told him, he said, you're going to become the richest man around. He said, what God is telling me to tell you, Pharaoh, during the first seven years, when all this corn is being grown, when all the harvest is great, he said, appoint one man over everything. And then let that man appoint other directors and officers over all the cities throughout Egypt. He said, and what y'all need to do during that first seven years, when the, when the getting is good, Joseph said, you need to go around every city and start building these big barns. He said, when you build the barns, every time you, you get some corn, he said, every time you get some money, go buy some more corn. Go buy some corn. He said, fill up every storehouse, every barn throughout the whole city, throughout the whole country of Egypt. Joseph said, and then when the second seven years come around, and ain't nobody else got nothing. Ain't nobody else got no food nowhere. Joseph said, guess what? They're going to have to come. He said, they're going to have to come to you, Pharaoh. They're going to have to come to you just to get some food to eat. Ain't the Lord all right? I tell you, I tell you, God can see way down the line. That's why I put all of my trust in the Lord. So Pharaoh, the Bible said, please, Pharaoh. When Pharaoh heard what Joseph said, Pharaoh said, this man pretty sharp. Pharaoh looked at all of his smart folks in the room. He said, who can we find that's more smarter and discreet and wiser than this man? Nobody can say nothing. Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, I tell you what, Joseph. He said, I ain't got nobody on my staff that can do what you can do. The man was in prison, and now he's going to be put over everybody. I know the Lord is all right. God is it. God is able to take somebody who everybody thought was a nobody and put him over everybody. God can do that, see? God can do that kind of stuff. He can take somebody who everybody thought was a nobody and put him over everybody. Pharaoh said, I ain't got nobody on my staff that can feel that position. He said, so I tell you what, you, what I'm going to do. Pharaoh said, I'm going to put you over my house. Over my house now. This is the king talking. He said, I'm going to put you over my house. I'm going to put you over everything that I own, everything that's here. Pharaoh said, and I'm going I'm I'm to make you so high in authority that, that, that you're going to be second to me. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Overnight, y'all. Overnight, God can take a bad situation and make it good. God can fix it, I tell you. God can fix whatever it is you're going through, and it don't take him long. The Bible said, the Bible said, he told Joseph, I'm going to put you over everything. Every single thing I got, you're going to be over. Pharaoh took his own ring off, put it on Joseph's hand. Pharaoh began to put Joseph in some nice, fine lens, made him look like a king. Pharaoh said, now, I want you to ride around Egypt. I'm going to introduce you to everybody. And everybody going to know I have put you in authority. Ain't the Lord all right? God will do some things for you, church. All you got to do is trust in him, keep living for the Lord, and don't mind suffering. Some folks don't want to suffer. But I tell you, I tell you, when you're suffering for the Lord, God won't forget about you. He put it over everything that he had. The Bible teaches us that one day, just because things are going well in our life now, if you forget about the Lord, God can cause trouble to show up in your life. But what I love about the Lord is trouble. It don't last always. The joy of the Lord is my strength. God put Joseph in charge and and when he did, the Bible teaches us something. Joseph was 30 years old. He was 30 years old, y'all, when, when he stood before Pharaoh and began this ministry. How old was Jesus when he started his ministry? 30 years old. Jesus had to go through a whole lot of stuff, didn't he? 
He was false accused, wasn't he? He was mistreated. Joseph was false accused. Joseph was mistreated. Jesus rose above it all. Joseph is going to rise above it all. When the time came, Joseph did just what Pharaoh told him to do. They built all these barns all over the, the country of Egypt. And, and, when the, and when the seven poor years came, Joseph was riding in the chariot. He was going all over the place. Y'all got this barn full of food? Y'all got this barn full of food? Y'all got this one full of food? Everybody thought he was crazy. But Joseph knew what he was doing. And then the time came. Good God Almighty. For the second, the second time for the famine to come. And there was no more food for the people. Things began to to look really bad. But God had already made a plan for his people. God had already told Joseph when the time come and they ain't got nothing. God said everybody in the world gonna come to Pharaoh. Everybody gonna need some corn. Everybody gonna need some food for the hard times. God is a good God, church. God will take care of his own. Verse 56 said, and the famine was over all the face of the earth. And Joseph opened up all the storehouses and sold unto the Egyptians. And the famine waxed sore in the land of Egypt. And all the countries came into Egypt to Joseph for the buy corn, Because the famine was so sore in all the land. When the people tried to come to Pharaoh, Pharaoh said, don't talk to me. Go talk to Joseph. He put Joseph in charge of everything. And I got to tell you, when, 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 when Jesus died on the cross, didn't God say that I give all power to my son? All power in heaven and earth, God gave it to his son, Jesus. See, I told you, Joseph represents Jesus in so many ways. I know the Lord is, is all right. I just want to tell you that one day we're going to rise above it all. Church, uh, you may find yourself uh, level to the ground. Uh, when the world uh, knocks you down, uh, when life has uh, its feet on your neck, uh, you ought to have enough faith in God uh, to be able to say, uh, I'll rise uh, above it all. Uh, anybody here, uh, do you know uh, that we serve uh, an awesome God, uh, a God that's able uh, to do anything, uh, anything but fail? Uh, the songwriter said, uh, my friends uh, may press me down uh, and change uh, my land to sand. Uh, God didn't say uh, my life would be easy always, uh, so when you knock me down, Keep your 
your hand uh, in the master's hand. Uh, I promise you uh, that one day uh, you'll rise above it all. Uh, you'll be able, uh, you'll be able to look back over your life uh, and give God the glory. You can tell the world uh, I never could have made it uh, without the Lord. Uh, anybody here know? Uh, nobody but the Lord uh, has kept you all this time. Uh, nobody but the Lord uh, brought you through this uh, and He brought you through that. Uh,
I learned how to stay on the battlefield for the Lord. I learned that even though I can't see what God is doing, I learned how to trust Him. You're looking at a man that went through some stuff. Not long ago, I went through some stuff, I tell you. And the world was telling me, how you gonna still trust in God? I see what you're going through. you roll. 